Standard Process Control Terminology Purpose and Role of Standard Control Terminology defines uniform terminology in the process control and instrumentation field, facilitates efficient communication among industry professionals, helps in the understanding and interpretation of product specifications by users and vendors. History of Standards Organization SAMA, Scientific Apparatus Makers Association SAMA PMC 20.1-1973 Terminology Associated with Industrial Process Instrumentation and Control SAMA PMC 22.1-1981 Functional Diagramming of Instrument and Control Systems Including Symbols and Diagramming Formats Used in the Process Industry ANSI American National Standards Institute of ASME ANSI C85.1-1963 Terminology for Automatic Control Instrument Society of America ISA S51.1-1979 Process Instrumentation Terminology Widely Accepted in the Process Measurement and Control Industry ISA S5.1 Instrument Symbols and Identification Establishing Uniform Means for Designating Instruments and Instrumentation Systems API American Petroleum Institute API RP550 Manual on Installation of Refinery Instruments and Control Systems Part 1 Process Instrumentation and Control Part 2 Process Stream Analyzers Part 3 Fired Heaters and Inert Gas Generators Part 4 Steam Generators Standard Process Control Terms Process Physical or Chemical Change of Matter or Conversion of Energy e.g. Change in Pressure, Temperature, Speed, Electrical Potential Process Control Regulation or manipulation of variables influencing a process to obtain a desired product quality and quantity efficiently. Input to process, mass or energy applied to the process. Output of process, the product delivered by the process. Supply, source of mass or energy input to the process. Control valve consists of the final actuator and controlling elements directly changing the manipulated variable. Load, anything affecting the controlled variable under a constant supply input. Open loop, control without feedback, cannot cope with load upsets. Primary element, the measuring element converting the measured variable into a form suitable for measurement. Transmitter, a transducer converting a measured variable into a standardized transmission signal. Controlled variable, the variable sends to originate a feedback signal. Controller, a device operating automatically to regulate a controlled variable. Controller Algorithm, PID, Mathematical Representation of the Control Action Performed. Set Point, Input Variable Setting the Desired Value of the Controlled Variable. Error, Algebraic Difference Between the Real Value and Ideal Value of the Measured Signal. Manipulated Variable, Quantity or Condition Varied as a Function of the Error Signal to Change the Controlled Variable. Feedback Control, Control action where a measured variable is compared to its desired value to produce an actuating error signal, reducing the magnitude of the error. Cascade control. Control where the output of one controller is introduced as the set point for another controller. Feedforward control. Control action where information on conditions disturbing the controlled variable is converted into corrective action outside of any feedback loop. Continuous History of Control Instrumentation was initially used for monitoring or measuring purposes, with early examples in Roman times and Egypt. Manual control was common in the early 20th century, with operators walking through plants to adjust valves based on gauge readings. James Watt's flyball governor in 1775 was the first automatic control scheme using feedback control. The process industry emerged significantly during World War II, leading to the development of process instrumentation and control companies. Hardware Software Evolution 1930s Mechanical hardware required direct connection to the process. 1940s Pneumatic transmission allowed remote control and more sophisticated strategies like feed-forward control, but was limited by the speed of sound. 1950s Electronic instrumentation Faster than pneumatics allowed longer distance control and centralization of control rooms. Mid 1960s, digital devices and computers were introduced, initially used with analog backup, evolving to direct digital control (DDC). Consequences of open loop control: Open loop control is effective only when the operator adjusts the valve. 
Any load change or supply upset affects product quality. Open loop control cannot handle load variations and poses safety risks due to lack of regulatory control. Advantages of closed loop control. Closed loop automatic control offers economic benefits and safety improvements. Increased productivity maximizes the amount of products made in a process. On spec products maintains product purity levels, avoiding off spec production. Energy and material conservation minimizes material and energy use, optimizing control loops. Safety provides a first line of defense before emergency shutdown devices, ESD. Types of control. Continuous control, used in continuous processes with analog measurements and digital controllers, maintaining process values despite disturbances. Sequential, on-off control involving a series of discrete actions in a specific order, used in valve lineup sequencing and pump compressor startup shutdown. Batch, combination of sequential and continuous control with time-dependent, repeatable operations used for blending and transfer operations. Determining controller action required for negative feedback. Positive feedback. Positive feedback in a closed loop reinforces the error until a limit is reached. Example, a tank's level control where exceeding the set point increases the level further until overflow. Positive feedback must be avoided as it leads to instability and undesirable outcomes. Negative feedback. Negative feedback in a closed loop minimizes the error depending on the controller's algorithm. Example, a tank's level control where exceeding the set point reduces the level. Essential for all automatic feedback loops to ensure stable and desired control outcomes. Direct acting element, an element where the output signal increases with an increase in the input signal. Input and output signals move in the same direction. Reverse acting element, an element where the output signal decreases with an increase in the input signal. Input and output signals move in opposite directions. Elements in series. When elements are combined in a control loop, their overall action determines the loop's feedback type. Direct acting elements in series maintain the direction of the input-output relationship. Reverse acting elements in series change the direction, affecting the overall loop behavior. Control valves the primary flow controlling element in a process control system. The valve's input is the stem position, while the output is the flow. Common household valves faucets are typically direct acting valves, where increasing the stem position increases the flow. Valve plugs. Valve plugs can be direct or reverse acting. Direct acting plug, flow increases with the stem position. Reverse acting plug, flow decreases with the stem position. Pneumatic valve actuators and plugs. Most common valve type is air-operated pneumatic valves. Air to open, ATO valve. Air pressure opens the valve, fails closed if air supply fails. Air to close valve. Air pressure closes the valve, fails open if air supply fails. Valve positioners can also achieve direct or reverse action. Transmitters. Transmitters convert the measured variable into a standardized transmission signal. Can be set up as direct acting, output increases with input, or reverse acting, output decreases with input. Most transmitters are direct acting. Processes. Processes can be direct or reverse acting. Energy flow process, heat exchanger. Direct acting, steam flow increases temperature. Refrigeration, reverse acting, refrigerant flow decreases temperature. Mass flow process, level tank, direct acting, flow input increases level. Pipe flow, reverse acting, flow increases, suction pressure decreases. Select control action per application. Controller action is selected based on the action of other elements in the loop to achieve negative feedback. Error calculation can be done as reverse action, E equals R minus C, or direct action, E equals C minus R. Rule for achieving negative feedback must have an odd number of reverse acting elements in the loop. Additional benefits of open loop data. Open loop tests help determine the combined effect of elements and the required controller action. Data obtained from open loop tests provides process characteristics and helps calculate preliminary PID settings. Identifying acceptable negative feedback loop responses. Loop gain and loop response. 
Dynamic responses depend on the total loop gain vector of the open loop, which includes magnitude and phase. Gain of an element is defined as the ratio of change in output to the change in input. Steady state gain K. Ratio of output amplitude to input amplitude when both are time invariant. It is a scalar value without an associated phase shift. Magnitude of total gain vector Kg or G. Ratio of output amplitude to input amplitude when the input signal is sinusoidal. Involves both magnitude and direction. Total gain vector G. Calculated as the ratio of the derivative of the output to the derivative of the input. Represented as G equals D dt output D dt input. Phase shift F. The difference in phase between the input and output signals. Can be a phase lead, positive angle, or a phase lag, negative angle. Dynamic response based on the gain function. Loop gain is the product of the gain functions of all loop components, transmitter, controller, valve, and process. Oscillatory response occurs if the phase shift around the loop is 9 is 360 degrees or a multiple of it. The loop gain values determine the type of dynamic response. Overdamped, critically damped, underdamped, constant amplitude cycling, or increasing oscillation. Dynamic response as a function of loop phase shift. Oscillatory response requires a 9 or 360 degree phase shift around the loop. If the phase shift is less than 9 or 360 degree, the loop will have a damped response and eventually stabilize. The control algorithm contributes to the phase shift and overall dynamic response of the loop. Work aid 1, procedure for determining required controller action for negative feedback. Rule, an odd number of reverse acting elements are required for negative feedback. Procedure involves putting an input on each element, observing the output, and recording the action. Work aid 2, identification summary of acceptable negative feedback response types. Acceptable responses, overdamped, critically damped, underdamped, quarter amplitude decay. Unacceptable responses, constant amplitude cycling, increasing oscillation, 